am here, living in the District of Columbia, where I work at the tipped minimum wage at $2.77 an hour. <laughs> Welcome to the nation's capital. I'm Jessel Nora, reporting for the Real News Network here in Washington, D.C. It's being called a day without a woman. Around the United States and the world, tens of thousands of women are going on strike or otherwise marking International Women's Day by acts of resistance and for racial, economic, and social justice. Actions are being held in almost every major U.S. city and dozens of countries around the world. under arrest and charged with disorderly conduct. This is the New York City Police Department. You are unlawfully in the roadway and obstructing... Several organizers of the Women's March were arrested carrying out civil disobedience, including Linda Sarsour in New York City. Schools are out today after a large number of teachers called out of work in neighboring Prince George's County, Fairfax, Virginia, North Carolina, among other school districts, while municipal courts are closed in Providence, Rhode Island. We're here at an action organized at the Department of Labor. We're speaking to participants and featured speakers about why they're here today and what their demands are. Our labor! Our labor! Women of color, they don't they don't may not be the face of these type of things, but I feel like they do a lot just on a day-to-day -day basis. Because there is a lot just difference between like a white woman and a woman of color, like specifically uh, a pay gap. Like for men, white women have a 77 cent difference, while black women specifically have a 64 cent difference from a white man. So it's really, really more of a struggle for black women. What role can white women pay, play in this movement? Um, the majority of white women that voted voted for Donald Trump, even though he ran an openly racist, xenophobic, and um, sexist campaign, and he, you know, there's tapes released that showed him bragging about sexual assault. I think what white women can do is to understand that we are all women, so you need to support not just women that look like you, but women of other sexual orientations, women of other colors, women of other um, religions, because we're all women, we're all going through the same thing, and we need to band together to have support for each other, solidarity with each other to make change. We work for the largest retailer in the world. And for us to work for a wage that does not support our families, where we have to choose between bills and food, where we have to continue to uh, put our kids in child care facilities that are not quality child care, for us to have to go to work sick when we need to take care of ourselves at home so we can take care of our families, for us to be denied of sick time policy that covers Walmart families when they claim to be a family oriented facility is just disrespectful. And we want it to end today. We want respect. It's not acceptable. And we are here standing for one fair wage to get rid of that ridiculously low minimum wage for tipped workers, but also to resist the Trump agenda.
We spoke to Jean Ross, co-president of National Nurses United. This is supposed to be a uh, international women's strike, um, a day without women. Um, you're out here um, as a leader of a, of a union, but do you think this can be successful without widespread participation of many, many labor unions? I think it will be successful in that it, any large group of people, at least if it gets you know, media attention, gets people to sit up and take notice and to really think about what a day without us would be like. And so today there's, um, the media is covering the rift in the GOP between the, the faction that wants to completely do away with Obamacare and the proposal um, you know, uh, that Paul Ryan and others are supporting that would cut subsidies for the poorest people and give I think 600 million in tax breaks to wealthy, the wealthy. Um, where do you stand in that debate? Well, we would support not doing away with the ACA until you can do something better. But we have always been strong proponents of a new and improved Medicare for all. Medicare is a great system. It works. People understand it. People like it. It's never, whatever health care system we have in this country, and we don't have one right now. I don't care about the ACA. It's not a health care system. It's a medical care system. So the only thing that will truly take care of everybody and make sure that they have health care, not health insurance, is Medicare for all. So we've always been fighting for that, and we will continue. And talk about why this is especially an important issue for women, the issue of access to affordable health care. Well, I think women are affected more by it. Um, you can have a, a partner or a husband without a job, but women right now are, what are they, 70% of the workforce, I believe? And so it's going to hit them harder. Plus, they make less, wrong but true, and so they are going to be more affected by it. For all of our coverage on International Women's Day, go to therealnews.com. With Cameron Granadino, this is Jess Lenore.